All right, so today we're going to looking at um, two aspects really. So one is to do with uh, pitch shifting, pitch transposition. So we trans we can we can transform uh, a sound from one frequency to another frequency using some digital method. Digital method. You can you can do this in various different way. Uh, the way I we're going to use today is uh, fairly simple, but it's not uh, what I should say is not fully completed because you can actually hear the sound being transport trans uh, positioned. However, to fully have the frequency shifted, you probably have to have uh, some uh, follow on post the process um, approach. <coughs> Excuse me. So. Uh, but this is not our focus. Uh, our focus is to also be able to shape the sound using um, uh, audio envelope. Audio envelope. Okay. So audio envelope is uh, some time domain property of uh, any kind of uh, uh, instrument sound. Time dom I mean time domain property. Basically, when I describe a piece of audio, we describe from two aspects yeah so one is from their time domain so the sound up and down in terms of its strength uh, its amplitude over the time secondly is more of the to do with the perceived pitch which is in the frequency domain so how and the timbre some people refer that to timbre timbre is more complicated it's combination between uh, a combination of multiple aspects including uh, amplitude as well as mostly frequency domain. So in past sessions, we have been looking at uh, FFT, DFT, which is the way to estimate frequency domain information of any sound. Um, and uh, today we're going to mainly focus on to how to simulate the dynamic of any sound. Okay, so here, if you look at my uh, shared screen, figure two, we have a diagram, which a typical, uh, there's terminology called ADSR. ADSR represents uh, a different stage of the amplitude changing of a natural recorded instrument. And uh, normally you can uh, categorize into different stages, attack, which is, you know, when the sound merges uh, out from nothing, and then you, have the, the amplitude decay, then sustain for a while, then release. I mean, if it's piano, probably you're looking at you put your foot in the pedal, then the piano sound, or you leave the finger on the keyboard and it will sustain for a while. When you release, the sound fade out. It's a very natural process. So what we're trying to do here is say, if we can practically using programming method, to uh to to mimic this uh, uh effects and that was that that is important in terms of uh, uh one one type of uh audio synthesize uh, uh tasks so when you want to synthesize digitally uh, uh instrument sound uh, try to be uh, as as true as truly as possible uh compare the original recorded sound so often you need to have some sort of a time domain envelope applied to that, in addition to the frequency components synthesize. I mean, when I talk about synthesize, it's like a more mainly this sort of approach is a subset of a larger concept called physical modeling. Well, certainly you can make any kind of other uh, synthetic sound, like a purely digital, like FM synthesized stuff. So this is particularly useful for uh, simulate real sound, real in instrument recording. Okay, so start with uh, section four is some uh, practical elements. Uh, unfortunately, yesterday I couldn't send uh, the system sound over the streaming to everybody although i follow the instruction click sending uh, system audio but maybe the matlab dealing with sound card has some confusion with uh, this zoom uh, sound capturing system anyway so the first of all it's the first uh, exercise to do with uh, pitch shifting 
is fairly easy to do. Uh, all the code in this section we should have known because we have done this before. Um, the only thing is concept. So we need to understand the concept more. Pitch shifting certainly is very important uh, uh, facility, in, especially in music technology and sound engineer. People do pitch shifting all the time, especially in the vocal. They are also, I think there's an app called Auto Tune, isn't it? Auto Tune is I mean, not necessary app, it's a plugin for Auto Tune. There's also an app. Uh, Produced by uh, Samuel, Samuel as a, a company spin off from Stanford University Digital uh, Music Department. They made a lot of different apps. If you want to, you can check it out. There's a uh, uh, pitch shifting is one of these uh, very popular uh, downloads. People like to uh, pitch shift in their vocal and singing. So, so what what we can do digitally is fairly easy to achieve that. So the the code here in the uh, page four, basically just generate a sine wave, okay? So it's generate sine wave. Then you just use sound, okay? So, okay, just, just remind everybody about, a bit about uh, when we create a digital sound, the couple of most important aspects of a digital sound, okay? So most important uh, element of any digital sound is a sampling frequency that doesn't exist in analog sound, yeah? So sampling frequency is key thing. Actually, this pitch transportation, uh, transposition uh, method is to do with manipulate sampling frequency. So here we generate a sound uh, with sampling frequency 44,100 with CD, uh, standard CD quality one. And then uh, TS, second line, is basically calculate um, a sampling period, the time between two samples. All right, so because we have this one basically means one second and divided by how many samples in one second, we got a time between two samples. And then the third line T uh, equal to this uh, kind of a, a, a strange expression. Basically, this is a, a specifically for MATLAB, easily to create a time, simulate a time. So we can't create a time, but this is simulate a discrete time. Basically, we uh, give them a physical meaning by doing that. We start from time zero and the middle with colon and the separate three parameters. The middle parameter is the step. So start with zero, step size is the sampling period, which is uh, time between two samples and end up with one about one second. The TS is going to be very small number because you have one divided by a large number. Uh, actually, in fact, the TS is about 22 microsecond. That's for a standard CD sampling rate. So, okay, so then the end up with one second, but minus just tiny bit of sample. So because doing that, you actually uh, create exact uh, for, for uh, 44,100 sample, as we said uh, many times. Uh, if, because we come from zero, so we have to end up uh, um, one sample before the end point, so we can have the exact number of samples. Okay, so then we can uh, tell the uh, software, say we want a frequency equal to 1K and amplitude one. This is full amplitude, it's maximum amplitude, the digital system will have. All right, any amplitude greater than one, if you play back or recording, uh, through uh, MATLAB or uh, sorry, uh, export to Wi Fi where clipping. So, have to the amplitude have to maximum uh, um, one. Then, finally, this is uh, a, a signal generation using sine wave. You can replace this cosine wave resulting similar thing because cosine sine is just 90 uh, degree phase difference in terms of uh, frequency sound same. Okay, so A multiplied by sine two pi Ft. This is a standard uh, situation. This diagram in the current, uh, this diagram is currently showing uh, the actual, okay, so, okay, sorry. Uh, let's, let's look at the sound function then. Okay, so when you, then you can play back this sound function and the sound function, should uh, uh, supply two parameters. 
One is the signal you created. Second is the sampling frequency associated with that digital signal. All right. So normally you're using sound of YFS, this format format. Certainly Y and FS were replaced by any parameter uh, you uh, actually saved, uh, it created in your software. Okay. All right. So I have this piece of code in this section here, highlighted. Uh, section and I, I hope everybody can see that clearly i have a enlarged font a little bit okay so i if i if i run this section i can certainly right click and say uh, evaluate current section it should uh, uh, okay internal device error so basically this is to do with my uh, sound device wouldn't be able to uh, meta wouldn't be able to pick up the sound. So I'm going to restart the MATLAB to try again. Okay, so uh, evaluate. I'm not sure if you can hear the system sound. Certainly the sound has been feeding to my earphone. Oh, great. So yeah, so it works. All right, so thank you very much. All right, I hope it's not uh, too noisy. All right, so in that case, so what we're trying to do is say uh, this this line of the code uh, does uh, sound a bit, which is great. You can hear yesterday's session. We can't uh, uh, say it. Okay, so you got two um, a parameter. First is the single name. Okay, I mean the level of the developer. My colleague Ryan, so he used us just sign as a single name. FS is exactly what we uh, typed here. You know. So, so what we, we what we do here is a pitch shifting, which we we done before. We can actually, when we play the sound, if we don't supply any sampling frequency, we can't do that. Basically, you have to give sampling frequency. Otherwise, the sound card doesn't know how to do it. But uh, MATLAB would automatically put a default sound uh, sampling frequency at eight k. So if I play that, it will sounds very low pitch. And, and certainly it will stretch the longer. Yeah. So you can hear that. Can you? I mean, I'm not sure if you can hear the pitch sound as well. Pitch shifted sound. Yes. Great. That's good. So if I'm going to do FS multiplied by 1.5, so it will actually shift the frequency, not only the playback frequency, but also the per perceived frequency of this digital sound, 1.5 uh, high. So you can do a similar thing, you know, you can adjust it. I mean, this is a very uh, simple experiment, basically, but it's how this, in that way you can actually uh, play uh, sound at different uh, speed. So this is one of the old uh, synthesizer does, you know, you, you, you recorded the sample, and then you play back at a different speed. You can mapping that to the kit. So you only have, a, you only need to store, uh, you know, a limited number of samples, uh, and you don't need to uh, kind of record all the pitch of the piano sound. All right. So in this case, we can actually does a similar thing for the piano sound. Okay. So let's just quickly try that. So we can actually, I have some uh, piano signal recording here. Uh, some kind of code here so we can evaluate that so we re have the piano sound here which uh, <clears throat> come from this piano middle say do wife and that's also in Moodle you can download and we uh, getting the information from there into piano sick so we can then sound this uh, piano sound piano sick then supplied with the correct sampling frequency. Yeah, so then what we can do in, well, it lasts for a while because this is a real recording and then can kind of shift this up to uh, octave. And then we can shift this pitch down uh, half octave. All right, so this is the way you can you can you can actually create separate a different pitch. However, however, there's a pitfall of this, so we need to uh, pitfall of that. 
So when you're doing this, what it does is you didn't alter anything about the original sound. So this picture, figure three, actually demonstrates the process. So the original sound had certain sampling frequency, but you play deliberately, uh, deliberately at a slow frequency. So your pitch will perceive the different. Actually, the pitch shifted is um, kind of a, uh, exactly amount of the proportional to the sampling frequency alter alteration. Um, oh, what I try to say is uh, this, the, the sample, you haven't changed the sample, you just alter the playback speed. So to be able to, to be able to keep this uh, shifting, you really need to have a post process. You have to resample this uh, pitch shifted sound, for example, inter interpolate some samples. So then you can have actually pitch shifted as well as uh, the sampling frequency keeps same. So in that way, you have to do either digitally, which you can use resample and filtering, which is advanced topic we're not talking about now, uh, or you can uh, use analog. Basically, you when you play back at different speed, you record it back at any sampling frequency you want, you actually have a pitch shifted sound. Okay, so that's one of the technical of early synthesizer use. Uh, which we um, um, can mimic, and it's very simple in MATLAB to code. Second one is slightly complicated to code. Any questions so far on pitch shifting? Okay, so this diagram here showing you uh, mimic uh, an instrument uh, uh, play, uh, like ADSR envelope using MATLAB code. So the first block is generate just a sine wave. The second block is you shape the sine wave um, uh, with kind of different section of amplitudes. So um, let me talk about the theory about this and demonstrate this picture to you in a minute on MATLAB. So what basically does here is uh, we have we be able to generate sine wave, no problem. And we'll be able to assign a certain amplitude to that sine wave, that is also no problem. But what we want is amplitude is varying against the time. So the amplitude is no longer, no longer fixed, and also even varying every single samples. Yeah. So you, you can actually create, like in early lab, we create a tune using notes. So we can create different notes, yeah, and put notes together, we can play a tune. But this is different. This is basically every note has up and down, all right? So it's not necessary you have amplitude and you know very kind of a uh, zigzag of the amplitude shape. So to achieve that, we're using a wonderful uh, method of function called link space, link space. And the link space take a couple of parameters. It can take two parameters or three parameters. So what it basically does is if you uh, say, y equal to link space okay so let's be better using MATLAB and do some interactions rather than looking at the lab sheets okay so i'm going to demonstrate the link space so link space is one of the uh, most uh, uh, useful in envelope manually create envelope for this lab here okay first of all let's try to uh, run the uh, demo of this run the code see what happens so you can see there's loads of link space in this piece of code. So in this middle section, which I actually copy paste from uh, page six, yeah, page six. Page six is uh, literally, well, apart from the page six code hasn't got any audio. I have a bit of audio out after I shaped the sound. Okay, but you can hear a bit of dynamic. <laughs> it's not, uh, you know, truly, reflect to whatever piano any instrument, but you create dynamic of the sound. So what we're basically here is we have quite lots of link space, a uh, link space uh, um, comment. So what is link space? Let's try, okay. So we can test link space. For example, I can say, uh, let's just do this, okay. Okay, let's just they say value equal to link space, zero one okay so you can you can accept this two parameter in this case what basically link space does is it will create a value from zero 
end value with one and it will create hundred numbers hundred numbers okay that's default that's default so if i want to control how many number we create uh, we can use this uh, for example we can say and then we want uh, just 10 number so in this case we create number from zero end up with one and we have 10 space okay 10 space so link space basically create a linear space that out a number array so why it is good you can say here okay so we for example just looking at uh, the example we did here zero one so we can create uh, a, a bunch of number start with zero end up with one and they in the middle they are uh, kind of a, a gradually increment by a, a even space 0 0.111 0 0.222 0 0.333 and so on. so that is basically if you're looking at the yeah that's right so that's basically determining the uh the the attenuation factor of any point of the line all right so what basically here is say we let's talk uh, let's uh let's um, put this figure back where's my figure so i can yeah that probably is better okay yeah that's better all right, so I have a, a figure here. So you can see, we then in these four lines, what we did is uh, we uh, assign manually create a bunch of number. So at each different section, we put into different variable. A represents the first section, which is attack, and D represents uh, the decay sets and s represents the sustain section and r represents the uh, release section so now in, we understand the syntax so in the link space here so what we did is we say we the first value is going to be the ratio you're going to apply to the starting point okay so the ratio is zero that means we apply zero to the original sound so zero multiplied by original any amplitude equals zero so it starts with zero end up with one so the, the this point here is one one multiplied by original sound is equal to the original sound the amplitude is the original so back to original so and in between in between we create multiple numbers those numbers will apply different ratios 0 0.1 0 0.2 so it will uh, attenuate the the sound in between so in that case, we create we create this shape. Okay. So the the third parameter instead of uh, instead of a fixed number like we did in the example ten or hundred, we use len multiplied by zero point one. Len is the length of the original sound here. Yeah, original sound zero point one. Basically, then if we multiply zero point one, for example, uh, if this case in the first case length multiplied by 0 0.1 uh sorry length multiplied by 0 0.1 is 4410 it's basically uh 10 percent of original sound which is 44100 so what we're basically saying is the first section going to last about 10 percent of the overall length the second is 20 percent overall length then third section, 40%, and so on. So in that case, you create an ADSR. Oh, well, uh, the, the finally, you, we need to connect all this bunch of number together in a full envelope. So this envelope is what uh, it's finally constructed into. Okay, so I can actually just plot envelope uh, to have a look. So if I just plot envelope, so we create this figure. Uh, I need to put it here a bit more, <clears throat> more. That's okay. So you can see the envelope clear now. So this is envelope we create. Remember, we only create the positive side. 
because the original sine wave is symmetrical between negative and positive. So this shape will apply automatically on the negative because it will, you know, when you apply the factor to the negative uh, minus two, zero point will become 0 0.1 on the negative as well. So this shape, we only create the envelope on the positive side, that's sufficient enough. Okay, so that's what. So how to alter the, uh, the envelope, easy. So if we're just looking at this code here, and then for example, um, if I think this, um, this decay, we need to make it uh, slightly uh, more towards the, towards the zero, the amplitude, in the second section. So from, from one to 0.7, we can change this to one to 0.4. Okay, so I want to decay a bit further. But if I run that without altering everything else, I will run into some uh, strange envelope shape. But still work, but it's a strange shape, for example. So we'll end up with this, because with, although the second section uh, we create, we decay the sound until 0 0.4, but the third section, sustain section, still have a start point 0 0.7. So to correct that, you really want the amplitude, the, the first amplitude of the, one section is same as the last sections and amplitude so you can connect them together otherwise you create a strange shape well you, you, you can create any shape if you want but to be able to understand how it works for example then i correct this to 0 0.4 and if we want to just continuous decay that so i can correct that and make sure all the lines for example you can see 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.3 needs to be add up to one lens okay now i'm wrong this okay so the the orange <laughs> the orange the orange shape is the new correct sound so now you have more kind of natural decay of the sound it's not too natural anyway but the, the purpose is to make that natural okay of the task all right, so I think that's the content. Let's uh, just talk about the task. So now this give you facility, give you the basic facility of doing uh, uh, the task. So the task is to say, we have a piano sound. Let's try to simulate this piano sound and do some physical modeling, you know, a very fancy <laughs> synthesized message. We, we have a piano sound that looks like this, so we probably need to create an envelope is more aggressive like that, you know. Uh, then we uh, try to apply the envelope to uh, a sine wave, which is a sine wave, is a similar sound as the piano, so we can create some piano sound. So that's today's task. Okay, so one more thing we haven't done, having a demo today, but it is, uh, you can do it by yourself, is the piano, you need to look at, Piano, if you, if you create uh, just sine wave and apply this, it sounds like a kind of a percussion sound, but it's never good. So a, a true piano sound has uh, loads of harmonic. It's very easy to, uh, not very easy. Piano has very good harmonic pattern. So this the first picture uh, showing using SP2 to analyze the, the piano sound. Okay, you try to get that first to make sure you get a good uh, FFT spectrum of the piano. So you can see all these spikes. The spikes are, are basically the, the energy point of harmonic. So fundamental frequency, hum, first harmonic, second harmonic, and so on. Okay, so um, then you can, to, to get better sound, you really need to add in a couple of uh, sine wave uh, together. Then you apply the envelope to that. In, in the first section, uh, we're looking at uh, um, the tools of uh, generate uh, envelope and shape any kind of uh, generated sound. So uh, you will see this screen. And then what we're going to look at is to um, simulate a, a real piano recording. Um, certainly, I think this is a fairly complicated task. Uh, and maybe some sort of tedious. Um, yeah, there's quite a few tricks uh, you can do on that. So we will give you some basic idea and approach to achieve that. Uh, then you can uh, spend your own time 
uh, to polish the code. I mean, if you want to use this as one of the assessments, you can continue work on. So I'm not to give you the, the whole answer. And again, it's not enough time to show you every detail, but we will show the uh, major approach of that. Mm, okay, so let's look at uh, the task. So the task is, we have a real piano recording and we trying to using uh, envelope and the synthesized approach to simulate uh, this uh, piano sound. So first of all, we start by uh, analyze this piano sound. Okay, so I have a MATLAB code here. By the way, the code is, uh, the exercise code, the demo code is available downloading from uh, Moodle website. Okay, so it starts from here, tasking section. First of all, certainly we need to start uh, audio read the piano signal. Okay, let's run this code. So after we read the audio signal, um, and also what, I, what I'm trying to start with is to first of all, look at the shape of this piano uh, in time domain and also the frequency domain information. So to looking at the frequency information, you, I'm using SP2. Um, I think maybe in the future version, SP2 has been removed by a different, uh, replaced by a different tool set called single analysis, analyzer, single anal uh, analyzer. And, and for my version, we can still use it. And for university, uh, MATLAB, which is 2017B, we still use that. It's a very useful tool. Okay. Uh, you can see my SP2 on the window. Unfortunately, I can't uh, enlarge the front of this, but we can actually import the piano signal. Okay, so let's import piano signal. So go to the data section and the sampling frequency, we use piano sampling frequency. After we write the code, the sampling frequency is going to be FS. So we do that same FS and you can give a name. I call it piano sick, whatever name, doesn't matter. Okay, so then the signal is imported in SP2. So then we can look at, certainly if you view the signal, it will assure you the time domain information all right so and also you can play and the sound to make sure that works so then the first of all is uh, this information can be useful to mimic the envelope okay so you can use that uh, this picture later as envelope and the most important is find out how we create uh, a piano a sine wave, a group of sine wave adding together, which sounds like this piano sound. Okay, so this is involved uh, a spectrum analysis, Fourier analysis. Okay. So people will wonder how we can get the picture like uh, in the uh, here, in the picture like this. Some people maybe initially couldn't get that. So we can point out the, uh, some uh, tricks of this. So, okay, so then if I highlight this uh, signal and in the spectrum column, I click create, it will pop out a spectrum view window. So in the spectral view window, we have a method here. The, the font is quite small, but in your MATLAB you will select. So just using FFT, FFT, which is a third down the menu, uh, fast Fourier transform. Um, it basically is digital Fourier transform implemented in the fast uh, algorithm. Um, so if you're doing that and click apply, you will get a spectrum look like this. So that is not uh, very clear in terms of spectrum. Okay, so you couldn't say much. You know, it's basically some noisy, noisy type of spectrum around the 160 minus 160 dB. So something is wrong here. Okay, so the problem of this, you can't get a nice spectrum of the piano signal is to do with this number of FFT. So the number of FFT at the moment is setting at 1024. 
it is correct in terms of they are getting the um, spectrum of the first 1024 sample of the piano sound. Okay, so the first 1024 sample of that piano sound is here, a little bit, you know. So you all know about seven seconds of piano sound is very large of a number. 1024 sample, I can't really calculate on top of mind, maybe a couple of milliseconds. So maybe this still in this silence bit. So you are doing, by doing that, you are doing the Fourier transform of this silent signal. Okay, so there are multiple ways to improve this. So the easiest approach certainly is say, let's put all the sample number. Remember in the last lecture, last uh, previous lecture sessions, I talk about to be able to estimate more accurate frequency information, you need to put more time domain number of samples into the Fourier transform algorithm. So in this case, the maximum number of this piano signal is actually showing here, it, which is seven, uh, sorry, 331,776. Uh, so that's a total number of the samples within this piano sound. So if I'm putting this number here, 331, 776, which representing I am going to put all the samples of this seven second piano recording into the Fourier transform. And then we can estimate. So if you just click the anywhere in the diagram, the, the fly button will highlight again. Then we should be able to get much better. Okay, now you can see the spectrum is showing a clear, like a piano like. Uh, structure. So you basically say all this regular spaced out peaks that basically means the sinusoid waveform components, sign components, very pure sign components. Um, all right, so I also try to mention another approach. Another approach might be better than this is you prepare the signal before you process it. That basically means you cutting a little bit so you can get rid of silence. If you do some cutting paste, you can do MATLAB or DAW. You just leave, for example, 0 0.5 second until one second, this bit of meat of this sound into the FFT, and that might be give you also a good result. There are multiple approaches. So the problem of the current approach, well, the, it's good enough to show the harmonic structure, but might be the amplitude estimation will be, uh, what I should say, uh, will introduce some estimation error. So the, so the magnitude estimation will be uh, kind of uh, uh, biased by the silence sound. But that's not, not a big problem for, for, for us to simulate. Okay, so uh, another important tool is you'll be able to zoom in. So if you, uh, okay, so this is a third button on this spectrum viewer. So you can actually click that and draw the area you want to zoom in. Uh, Savory said uh, you did, a, yeah, that's also good. Yeah, okay, that's no problem. So as long as you've got enough sample, uh, to put into SP2, you should get good results. All right, so now we can actually measure the frequency. Okay, so you can see, you can move this uh, uh, marker. So there's a marker. If you click that button here, you can marker, and the marker we are showing uh, horizontal, uh, vertically, the corresponding frequency, corresponding frequency. So here, what we did is manually, what I did in this demo is manually copy paste or record these positions. So you can actually measure mo more uh, harmonic components and, and measure all this frequency into, uh, I, I copied the paste here. So I said, okay, the frequency components, first frequency is about 260 Hertz, 0.9 Hertz, and the second, uh, frequency components is about 520 
uh, three hertz and so on. So we can actually record that. Okay, so the second thing I'm going to uh, measure is the magnitude difference. I mean, this is uh, quite a strange um, recording. I'm not strange. I mean, some, I, I, I once I read some acoustic book says uh, some instrument, uh, the, the, sec, the, the harmonic, the first harmonic or second harmonic, well, theoretically it should be first harmonic. The harmonic amplitude might be um, larger or the energy of the harmonic uh, might be larger than the fundamental. So this is happening in this piano say, but most uh, key, the fundamental has the largest magnitude. So also you need to measure the difference between the energy between those uh, uh, frequency components. Again, this is the estimation. So it's not a proper purely uh, just, uh, you know, um, correct because if you, I mean, reflect to the true uh, recording, well, it is very much good, but how, however, if you want to improve that, you might try to have a different uh, section, put a different section of this audio into the analyze. So, okay, so let's look at the difference between these two. So you can see here, we can use this horizontal marker. And uh, if I align this two marker with two peak of the sound, it will show the difference here, All right? So if you turn this line, a different way around if you using dash one for the second one and using solid line for the first one you can say the difference is 16.1218 whatever db so that basically means the second harmonic is has uh, 16 db higher than the first harmonic or the first harmonic is has 16 db than the fundamental uh, frequency energy so I can record that here as well, 16.8 dB. You can do that for rest of the measurement, just to measure the, the relative difference between the first fundamental frequency and the harmonic ping point you want to measure, okay? And record that dB. So here, what I want to introduce is a very, um, very very useful comments called db to mac okay so now i did manually create the two uh, sinusoid components of this piano this is just for demonstration because if you want to simulate a uh, very good sound quality you might need to record more of these values measure more of the value and generate more harmonic and eventually you can probably synthesize a better sound at the moment, I just use this, just to show the approach you're going to do. So, because what I'm trying to do is we can generate the sound uh, just using sound wave at those measured frequency and also using the difference amplitudes, the relative different amplitude to actually generate those uh, sound. So the, the, the first harmonic, which is the second signal, which is 16.8 dB um, stronger than the first frequency component. To be able to calculate the amplitude, because we normally say the spectrum estimation using dB scale, but when we're programming, we use uh, the linear scale like, like amplitude. To do that, we can use a command called dB to mag. So dB to mag is a building function which you convert to dB to magnitude linear magnitude so we can test here on the common window for example if i say db to mac then i type 16 db here so basically means if the two sound is 16 db different then the larger energy sound will have 6.396 uh, times amplitude than the weaker sound okay and if you to uh, if if them, if it's minus three dB, for example, if if one compare another is minus three dB, you can say it's about zero point seven oh seven, you know, about seventy percent energy of the uh, of the first sound. Then you have uh, minus three dB difference. So dB to Mac is a very useful tool to 
to convert between dB and the magnitude. So that's why in this case, again, I hard coded uh, using, if I measure the difference is 16.8 dB. And then if I do that, 16.8 dB, it will give you this value here. So the value here is actually that. So in more accurate way, what we should do is to say dB to max bracket 16.8. Okay, so this is approach to generate sound. Well, you can see I didn't use a sine wave, but we're using course uh, syngen. Syngen is a function I wrote because we're going to generate quite a lot in, in reality, in practice, if you want to do a real project to simulate sound, we probably want to uh, generate probably six or five or even 10 harmonics to make sound more realistic. So in that case, it is very troublesome to write all the sine waves. If you generate one sine, we use those many couple of lines code. Yeah, you need a couple, at least uh, uh, six lines code. And then because we're repetitive using similar structure, so why not using, we can generate, a, a, we, sorry, we can make a function of that. So I wrote a function called sine gen, sine function, uh, sine wave generator. So this function again, it can be up, uh, downloaded from uh, the uh, Moodle site. So then what we do is we simply call the sine gen function and we pass three parameter in this sign gen function i have uh, defined three arguments arguments means the parameter you pass into the function so you give the function a frequency of the information you want this is we're going to replace the, by the harmonic frequency you recorded you you know noted it down by measurement sampling frequency whatever sampling frequency you are going to use and duration whatever duration you want to use. And this, this function will return a signal. Return signal means when you pass this parameter, it will give you a signal back. So in that case, here is a simple uh, sign generation function, okay? So now we can use that. For example, the signal one basically is the fundamental frequency. We say the measurement is that and the sampling frequency already defined. Uh, it's basically we want to exactly the same as recording sampling frequency. Duration we at, def at the moment define as two seconds because that again can be varied. Okay? Ideally, the duration needs to be exactly the same as the, you know, uh, the duration of the sound. So we'll be able to calculate that. I haven't done this because you're going to complete in your task time. Okay, uh, and then Signal two, we use the dB difference. So then it's um, it's stronger than signal one and with different frequency, something frequency, same duration, same. Otherwise you kind of mix them together. Okay, so when at the moment we just show two uh, uh, harmonic components, you can add in more. So eventually what you need to do is adding all this harmonic together. So I define a variable called SYNSYNC, which is a synthesized signal, which is addition of these two harmonics. So I want to remind everybody, when you try to mix two signal, you're using addition. When you apply uh, amplitude modulation, like envelope using multiplication, all right? So when we, if you look at the code here, the signal, if you reply envelope, you're doing multiplication. Multiplication is apply the amplification attenuation factor, such as envelope, whereas mixing is adding these two signals together. By all means, if you're adding all these components together, sometimes you will end up with uh, um, clipping. What I mean is uh, it will, uh, the amplitude will greater than one. So we do a normalization. This is a typical normalization code everybody would know. Dot divided by max ABS, original signal equal to normalized. Okay, then we can apply whatever the shape of the envelope you want to that. So I have exactly similar code here, but instead you can customize that. So in this code here, what I did is say, 
Okay, let's run the code first, then we can explain the diagram. So I see if I can run the code here. Let's do uh, do a sound here and a sound later. If I do sound, so this is before apply envelope, but this is already uh, not just a, a single sine wave. It's already mixed to harmonic sound. So we can try that here. So let's uh, run up to this code here. All right. So the 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 synthesized the normalized sound looks like this. Looks like this. So there's two only two uh, uh, harmonic components. You can add more to make it more realistic. And then we apply envelope. So we uh, actually are adding a PA per pause the the sound, and then we apply the envelope. And then we can sound the new thing. All right, so this showing we actually achieved something like a little bit dynamic. Certainly, I didn't shape this very well because it's kind of uh, uh, leave, leave everybody else to do that. So, so I tried to shape a little bit, so make it more attack, I, I adjust the attack, and also adding a bit of leading, arrow, uh, leading zeros. So this is silence bit. So this bit, instead of ADSR, I have uh, this SR stand for silence. Basically just say, maybe I want 10% of this as leading silence. So I just start with zero, end with zero, and 0 0.1 multiplied by length. So, but remember if you're adding any sections, so because if you say, I really want uh, this audio envelope to be more kind of fine tuned envelope, so if you want to add more uh, fine tuner, you can actually adding more sections of the envelope. So in this case, I, my envelope has now not just the ADSR, but the leading silence, but you can have A1, A2, D1, D2 to make it more fine tuned. And eventually line 16, seven is your uh, envelope multiplied by the synthesized sound. You will create this sort of, uh, well, you, if you make sound of, have a bit of like this uh, dynamic in there. Okay, so uh, answer some questions. First of all, uh, Tom asked, do you need to find the magnitude difference for each harmonics? Yes, you need to, because in this case, I showed in the demo code, I showed the magnitude difference is uh, the first, I mean, the first, uh, components which is fundamental frequency i have amplitude uh, with one so there's no amplitude basically it's one you know if i write explicitly it's one multiplied by that so then the second one is larger than that so the db to max 16.8 because the measurement shows the second one the second uh, sine wave components as 16 db about 16 db higher 16.8 db higher than the first peak so i basically convert that into a factor so using db to map the multiply a sine wave so that is a diff amplitude difference okay so they can what i i like to do is to uh emily ask is the difference always calculated from the fundamentals so you can do mode different way, but your code needs to adjust uh, accordingly. So at the moment, what I suggest you to do is always calculate the difference between fundamental. Otherwise, you have to, you know, changing, you know, relative amplitude every time. So otherwise, if you always compare the difference between fundamental and harmonic, you are, you'd be able to just uh, use fundamental as one and the rest of whatever difference you just put here db mac whatever db mac whatever then it's easy for coding and then uh, certainly you need to do normalization uh olivia asked for third harmonic you write six three equal to db yeah okay let's let's just write a third one 
just uh, you know very i think i can write in uh, two minutes so you can see the approach so for example if i want to have add a third yeah okay i have a third one so uh, db i mean so first of all i need to copy paste the syntax so if i like copy paste syntax but remember this the, the actual number going to be replaced by the actual measurement so this is the first i copy paste from uh, components two so then first one you need to decide what is different between the magnitude difference between uh first and third so i'm going to go back to my measurement so let's uh, look at one it's it's not very good because it's basically very close this two isn't it so i'm just enlarge that i mean and bring the marker into the space yeah okay bring the marker into the space so measure the first one and measure the second one, a uh, third one, sorry, third one. Okay, the third signal. Now we can say it's actually 1.1562 a higher energy than the fundamental. Okay, so now I'm going to do dB to max 1.1562. So again, uh, the, the way is you can record that, then 1.1562. Five six two. You don't need to that accurate because those you remember is those are ex estimations, but it's basically have some value to start with. Is always good. One point one five six two. Okay. So now this value six point eight dB going to be replaced by one point one five six two. If I want to make sense of this value, I can always just evaluate this selection. It's basically one point one four. Uh, in a magnitude. Also, the, the, the second parameter you need to uh, change is the frequency. So let's, let's have a look at the frequency of that one. Again, you can probably just zoom in a bit more and uh, have a look at the frequency in more detail. So let's uh, move this marker to here. So it says about this, this is the value about 786. So the third one is 786. So I can put that number here as well. Okay, so now what you need to do is you need to add signal three as well. And then we can run this code. So you got more kind of a harmonic component there. Okay, so let's see other questions. This is a spectrum of the um, piano, yeah, and the the each of these frequency components are showing in the dB scale. dB scale, linear scale is uh, if you look looking at the um, the, the menu of this tool, you can actually change in the dB scale to linear scale. So we can actually say, go to linear scale. But if you change it to linear scale, you can only say a very little bit uh, harmonic. Okay, you can see those are the linear scales. You can't really say much in terms of the frequency spectrum. So then you change it back to dB scale. Suddenly you can say lots of other uh, harmonics. It is because, uh db scale is not linear scale so the db and the linear scale db is a comparison it basically is a ratio between two values the equation of the db is 10 day log based a1 divided by a2 you probably need to if you don't know exactly if you forgot exactly what db stands for you can go uh, have a quick google search online the, actually what, what i try to uh, tell a little bit more is about uh, the significance of this, why we're doing DB in audio, DSP audio processing is because human ear is more sensitive, uh, as probably you everybody know better than me as acoustic subject, human ear more sensitive to the DB, not more sensitive, more aligned, the, the sensitivity of our hearing is more aligned with DB scale, all right? So for example, we cannot see the, uh, the harmonic if you were using linear but we can hear it because our ear the db scale physically what it does is a compress big difference and enlarge small differences 
So if it's a big difference, it will again using dB scale logarithm, it will compress it. Where if it's a small difference, do you pick it up? So it's very good for uh, like uh, alignment with well human perception in terms of hearing. Okay, so that's okay. Uh, one couple of one more uh, hint. Okay, so for doing that, I mean, I if you really want to uh, simulate uh, any kind of a physical sound in uh, in vast more detail and more automation, there are a couple of things you can do. Is um, first of all, can we automation of uh, of this? This is a bit of like advanced, but those are the approaches. Can we automation of detect harmonics? So certainly we can, because you can actually, you see there's a certain pattern. So over a certain period, you got peaks. So we can automatically find the peaks. So there are algorithms to automatically find the peaks. This is automation. And find the value of the peaks. So we can do automation to be able to do this process. At the moment, we're doing manually, which we a measurement, record, and do it manually. We can also automate the process, but that's slightly more advanced. And also, can we automate the envelope? So at the moment, we just try an error, we just uh, describe the envelope. Also, I think in uh, MI toolbox you did in acoustic, there are actually there's one algorithm be able to automatically extract the uh, envelope of any sound. So if you can do both automatically, you almost be able to automatically does that. There is peak find algorithm in MATLAB. Okay, so we can use that. Jake uh, is right. So here for the filter, extra envelope of the audio signal. There is also a MATLAB code for that. That's kind of a slightly advanced. We are not going to uh, use that for today's task, but you might need to use that. You might want to use that in the uh, assessment. Yeah, that's right.